plaintiff, Bill Besterman, was best friends with the defendant. And he says once he allowed her to move into his apartment, he soon discovered she was obsessed with him. Bill is suing his former roommate for rent and the loan. Defendant Danielle Power insists Bill was obsessed with her, and he has been for years. Danielle says she only lived with Bill for a short time because he was a fall down drunk and the living situation was unsafe. She's countersuing for harassment. Start with you. Well, Your Honor, um, I've known Danielle for about six years. I would have considered her my uh, best friend. Um, I had her and her family move into my apartment and it was very quickly I could tell that she was obsessed over me. She took advantage of That's my life. That is so not true. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think you were a big part of any of this. <laughs> then. <laughs> you have been obsessed with her since the day you met her. <laughs> but seriously, she took over my car. She took over my apartment. Um, whenever I started dating my girlfriend, she completely objected to the relationship, told me I couldn't uh, be with her. Uh, told me that I had to leave her or she'd leave me high and dry in the apartment. That's just... not exactly the way that happened. Not exactly, either. okay. <laughs> Go ahead, tell me more. The deal was is that she, while she had her job that she'd be able to give me $250 out of each one of her paychecks. Beginning when? Um, well, I let her slide at the beginning of June. She just moved in, I was gonna be nice. But then around July, I said that she'd have to help out and she only paid half of that deal in July and then half the deal in August. The agreement was two? 250 a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And that would be 500 a month? Mm -hmm. How much was the rent overall? 670. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the 670 for the rent, but I, one, she drove around my car, and then there was the was car insurance. Was that part of the deal? There was the car, the car insurance, the rent, How the often bills. did she use the car? Every day. Okay. Yeah. And the utilities, obviously. Mm -hmm. All right. Ma'am, let me hear from you. Background and any other information you want me to know? Um, we have been friends for about six or seven years. Mm -hmm. It's definitely the other way around. I, I found out that he is very obsessed with me, that he has been for a very long time. How long did you all live together? Uh, we only lived together for three months. I had to leave very quickly on one week's notice. Why? Because it wasn't a safe place to stay anymore. Why was it? What happened? Because he is a complete fall down drunk. Um, and uh, his girlfriend, who he says that I was very jealous of, it was a matter of her endangering my children. She wasn't allowed to be around children. I asked that Excuse he not have her. You can stand up. Um, State your name. Alicia Smith. Uh -huh. uh, I was never told to be ar not around children. Good. Okay. So let's move beyond that. The agreement, there was never actually a dollar amount. What we had originally discussed would be that I would turn my check over when I got it, and then he would pay for the daily stuff, like the groceries and you things like that. You would give him every dime of your check? Pretty much, for the most part of it. You say for the most part, when you turn your check over to somebody, well, like, either they give you some of the money back I would, or like they keep the whole check. Like if my check was 500, check. I would give him like three or 400 towards it was going to be ideally, and then he would pay for the daily stuff. Like and that's what happened. Okay, if your check was 500, you would give him three or 400. And I would keep so. a little bit because I have two children. I have two small children, so I would keep a little bit in my pocket, and then he was supposed to provide like the groceries. So we do like a back and forth because I had a big. On average, how I had a big often would sum. you give him all of your check? I, like I said, it was never 100%, but like three or four times, I would give okay. him like two-thirds of my check. Two-thirds? Yeah. Okay. And your check would average out how much, typically? Uh, it was around five or $600 at the time. Five, that's $350 out of a $500 check. Yeah, and I and also... And you got paid every two weeks? Yes, sir. And you felt that was fair, obviously, and that was imp an implied agreement if you voluntarily gave him that. Yes. So we have 350 uh, every two weeks. Yeah. And you say it was 250 how often? Yeah, about $500 about. a month. About. Yeah. So yeah, that's what you we'll said. With, you all yeah. discussed it. <laughs> like she said, said, there wasn't a, a definite dollar amount. Okay. But the thing was, is we were going to split the bills as best we could down the middle. And I told her a fair amount was if she gave me half of her paycheck. Okay. But under what circumstance did she leave? Uh, well, it ended up being that, you know, once that she told me I couldn't see her, I said that eventually, like, that I thought that wasn't fair, but I would give it a minute. So I took a week off of dating her, 
and I said, I'm going to see how the no, no, give me a second. I'm going to see how the household works. If if Danielle was going to be nicer and more congenial around the household, then I would maybe think that it wasn't worth it. Keeping my five-year friendship was worth more than a, a two-month relationship, but whenever Danielle continued to be rude and outrageous at the household, screaming at me any chance she got, I decided, you know what, why as a grown man can't I be with mm -hmm. this woman? So I decided no, and I told because her you I were can't have my Danielle. car. I was obsessed with Danielle, that's why I picked her. Again, Lucy, please. So then, so now, so now we have me. You've been obsessed with Danielle from day one, and her. everybody exactly. knows it. Exactly, because I was obsessed with her. So. I told her I, c I can't have you having my car all the time. How could you tell her she couldn't have something she was paying you for? Well, no, 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 you sit back down. <laughs> I was willing to do 50 50 with her. Yeah, but no, I wasn't, you said but that was the deal. Right, but I wasn't willing to do 100%. I never had my car. Oh, okay. I never had so my car. She, 50 50 You had okay. an agreement that she would split it 50-50. She took it 100% of the time. Correct. She also banned you from dating your girlfriend. <laughs> you weren't dating or anything. No, we were just friends. Why yeah. did you let her tell you who you could date? She said that she would threaten to leave. I, I wanted her there because I right. wanted her to help out around. Why couldn't you just she... see your girlfriend outside of the home then if you thought it would risk your tenant? She still said she'd risk our friendship. You couldn't date her under any circumstance. <laughs> Exactly. And you went for that. I didn't. I went up, I saw her attitude wasn't changing. I didn't go for it. And I set my foot down and I did start to date her. <laughs> the craziest thing in the world. You couldn't date her under any circumstance. Exactly. And you went for that. I didn't. I went up, I saw her attitude wasn't changing. I didn't go for it. And I set my foot down and I did start to date her. <laughs> the craziest thing in the world. Plaintiff Bill Besterman is suing his former roommate, who claims Bill was obsessed with her. But Bill insists she was obsessed with him and became jealous of his witness. What about this loan, sir? Well, I told her that I would squash the $500 that I felt that she owed me if she would, uh, if she'd give me one of the TV, she had two TVs. I said, let me have one of the TVs. I'll squash the $500 like it never happened. I said, I'll even be willing to let you borrow $700 to get yourself on your feet. She agreed to that. She cashed the check and then completely cut off communication with me. I haven't heard hide her hair or seen her till this day. Ma'am? That is absolutely not the Tell way that it side, happened. Tell me inside, Bill has a real drinking problem. Mm -hmm. I have several witness statements to this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The reason I asked him to stop seeing Alicia in the home because he was he was getting drunk. He, he said to... you wouldn't allow him to see her outside of the home. That's either. not true. I asked him not to bring her into the house. I didn't want her around my kids. And he was getting drunk at night. Like my sister had come to the house and mm -hmm. he was supposed to be watching the kids. And he was down at the pool and my kids were up alone because he he was out with her doing things like that. And my older sister, we drove around four hours one night looking for him. Mm -hmm. We found him in a sewage ditch. As far as the, the last month's rent goes, um, with our agreement, he stopped buying food. There was liquor in the freezer. He was going out every night. He was going out with her. He was doing all this stuff. Every I had night. to pay for a babysitter. I had to pay to, you know, for the extra gas to drive them where I had to go. I like, I almost lost my job over this. What does it have to do with the rent? The agreement wasn't upheld on his end, so I had to what buy groceries. Was, I what had to part do... wasn't upheld? Because I was paying him, I was paying him, and he was supposed to be putting the groceries and stuff in the house. I can't give him my check if I don't have food for my kids to okay, eat. Okay, so it was groceries he failed to get that last month. He forget, he failed to get the groceries. He wasn't month, putting gas. Much, the prior the month, how much did he pay for groceries? Uh, I couldn't tell you how much that he put down on the groceries. Okay, do you know how much you put on the groceries the month prior to her moving? No. You don't but know no, how don't much you're mouth, spending? Sir, no. okay. I'm sorry. We don't have an agreement here, folks. You said about this, about that. Yeah. I'll give you part of my check. Give me a little more okay. sometime. Give me all. You can have all of it sometimes. And now we're talking about you didn't pay because of food. And you have no idea how much food usually costs. So I can't make any decisions regarding monies on well, this rent because so, I have no specific agreements. I understand that. But Let's I do, talk about the loan. I do have a copy of the check right here. That's um, the loan? Yes. All right, let's see that, please. When he handed me this check two days before I left, he said, I'm sorry everything happened this way. I'm sorry it couldn't work out. 
and he said he wished he could do more and he handed me in the check and you'll see in the memo he said for whatever. So you think he gave you this check to get back on your feet? It was it was a gift as far as I'm concerned that's as what he said to me. As far as you're concerned. He said, uh, he said I'm sorry for I don't think that's everything. the same belief. No. He said that's not no. as far as you're no, concerned. No, no. Who, she said that we were still we could still be friends after the fact mm -hmm. number one. Were number you angry two, when were you all angry when you left? No absolutely not. Did she ask I want to borrow no. some money? No. I gave her the loan because I thought she might need it, but, but I you told her but I, want it, but I want it repaid. When did she agree to repay you? She said that she was getting money back at the end of October and she could pay me at the end of that. She didn't say where the money was coming from? Um, it's some refund you get for living in Alaska or something. Yeah, I was getting my state dividend, but that mm -hmm. is not what I said to him. What I had said to him was that he didn't need to worry about it, that I was getting my check in October. Didn't and need like, to worry about what? What do you mean? I mean what you just told me. What were you referring to he didn't have to worry about? I was referring to the phone call. He handed me that Not check. Not worry about what? That he didn't, he wanted that I didn't money. need the money. And you said handed, don't worry about handed, it. Even when he handed me the check originally. No, we're not when talking I was about Florida, that. I'm, I'm saying, talking about the one conversation. I understand which that. sounds like an agreement. I and never, I'm going to conclude it's an agreement. That implied that you were going to repay him. Fifteen hundred dollars for harassment, what is that for? Um, I have some voicemails and text messages from mm -hmm. him just calling and harassing me, calling me at all times of the day. Okay. Night, calling and my And beginning when? Uh, they started in November. And how often would he call? He would call uh, sometimes three times a day, sometimes six times a day, okay. no, depending on bad. what he felt. How many days? It, it went through to the beginning of January or the end of December. I think the 21st so is the last one. So approximately every day, several yes. times a day. Yes. Okay. And what would you tell him? Um, I didn't. I didn't answer the phone calls because of the nature of the text messages, okay. the voicemails. What were the texts saying? You have them yes, there. Yes, I you do. Want to show me. I also and have you a, have a voicemail, a voicemail you to want play. to play? Yes. What I had said to him was that he didn't need to worry about it. That I was getting my check in October. Didn't and need like, to worry about what? What do you mean? I mean what you just told me. What were you referring to? He didn't have to worry about. Plaintiff Bill Besterman is suing his former roommate, who claims Bill was obsessed with her. But Bill insists she was obsessed with him and became jealous of his witness. Go ahead and play your voicemail. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> oh, like this one of your sorry. drunk benches here. It might have been. Someone who has a bachelor's degree in psychology, take it from someone who's probably going to spend the rest of their life helping people. Hopefully get through traumatic events like being insane and stupidly crazy like you. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Hold on. Ooh. All right. Oh my god. Oh my god. You are. You need to seek some help. You really do. Um, I know here in Florida there's a number called 211. Um, I don't know if they have anything in the ice cold wilderness of where you're at. But anyway. Oh yeah. So yeah. No. Yeah, I'm sure somewhere in there you know you're crazy too. No, it's a definite. Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, you, um, crazy. Okay, bye. How do you want to explain that? You could start off with the first off uh, that she said she'd pay me by the end of October. So yeah, the first couple times I talked to, or tried to get a hold of her in November, um, they were messages along the lines of, hey, are you getting my messages? Let's I'd like to talk to about talk these to you. messages. Um, I, I, I haven't heard from you, hide or hair, mm -hmm. this or that. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't know what messages she got or what message she didn't. She never answered the phone. She never even well, picked you, up and said, please now. leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could tell she got that. You just huh? heard them. Yeah. And I see a bunch of other uh, offensive uh, language. Therefore, I'm going to grant your judgment. $1,500 for the harassment. And I'm going wow, to grant you your loan, sir. Uh, and that was $700, leaving you, man, with $800. Not going to rule on the rent because you all never had a complete agreement. All right, have a good day. Oh. Wow. You did it again. If you just said it answered the phone, you wouldn't have got harassed. Who's the crazy one? Oh, I don't know who's crazy, but you didn't say much, did you? All right. Well, that was fun. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Be glad I didn't get uh, the I'm chance. Glad, I'm glad you had a nice trip Be to Chicago. Be glad I didn't get the chance. Oh, I'm not. I'm not.
So that's it. So, so because you could record a couple voicemails, but you couldn't answer the phone, you get another $700 out of me. It's ridiculous that, that she wanted to, that she took all these things from me in my life, and I was nice enough to help her out one last time, call me on the phone. Oh, yeah, we're you still cool. You only helped her out and because went, you were obsessed with her and, and wanted to get in her pants. And that's exactly what happened. I tried to get in her pants, but, and yet I didn't want her, told her that, and then dated another girl. Okay, so what's that's exactly what I did. from your mom saying, well, you wouldn't date him. That's why you had to date her. Yeah, where was that? Mom's you didn't you didn't play that in court, yeah. though, did you? Because okay. that happened. Plaintiff Joseph Harris Jr. says when he moved in with the defendant, he had no idea it would be like an episode of the real world. Joseph claims the defendant and his boyfriend argued constantly and had huge blowout fights three to four times a week. Joseph is suing for moving costs and emotional distress. Defendant Frank Ray says Joseph had multiple girlfriends during the time they lived together, and he often heard Joseph having loud sex with these women. Frank denies owing Joseph. Tell me what's going on. Uh, well, sir, um, I met Frank originally. I thought of him to be a pretty decent guy. Where did you all meet? How? Um, he had an ad on Craigslist uh, oh, okay. for a room for rent. Uh, when I met Frank, um, my initial impression of him was that he was a pretty good guy, um, but little did I know I was moving into, you know, a real world setting. Um, I'd say him and his significant other were very um, argumentative all the time, a lot of erratic behavior. Um, I can remember an instance where I had just met my girlfriend. Um, I was bringing her to the house. Uh, upon walking into the house, we heard loud yelling and, you know, bickering, arguing. Uh, she thought it was the TV. Um, turned out it was them two. And on top how of... How often did things like that happen? Three, four times a week. Okay. And how long did you stay there? Five, six months. Six All and right. months. Well, you just nosy? No, I wasn't nosy. <laughs> yes, you were. So why in my didn't face. you leave? Somebody doing this three, four times a week, they're yelling and arguing and it's bothering you. Either you're listening or you're leaving. Well, as far as I was concerned, I liked the house. I wasn't in their business. But it was disruptive to you, is that what you're Correct. saying? All right. All right, sir, you want to give me some background and we'll get to the specifics of the uh, moving expenses and emotional distress. Okay. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, uh, George. Um, I just want to give you a background of myself a little bit here. I'm American French Canadian, moved here around 20 years ago and um, been uh, watching TV all the time and then I watch different shows. Uh, judges, I felt that uh, you're you're being very humor and uh, stern and fair, fair because um, you you told one of your people that they're in court. You've been lying and changing your words. I love that because I don't lie. I, I hate people lying to me, and I give myself away true. if I lie. That's so, not true at all. And, then, and I don't um, come down on you like Judy, do I? Uh, Judy, who? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> you know what to say. <laughs> Watch different shows, uh, judges. I felt that uh, you're you're being very humor and uh, stern, and I hate people lying to me, and I give myself away if I lie. That's so, not true at all. And, then, and I don't um, come down on you like Judy. Who, Judy, who? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> you know what to say. <laughs> Plaintiff Joseph Harris Jr. rented a house with a defendant who claims he often heard Joseph having loud sex. What was it like living with the uh, plaintiff? You wanted to say something also. Yeah, Stand up. Mark, my All friend, right. my partner. Hi, State yes. your name. My name is Mark Hicks. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was living with Frank, Francois Ray. You know, sure, we always argued. That's n near here nor there. But no, okay. I don't know, a few times Not a week. Always. The way we both talk, it's loud. So I might have said, hey. No, he said argue. We, no. we do argue, I'm, I'll admit it. I'm trying to clean it up, Francois. You know, if he That's said. Okay. <laughs> you know, Go ahead. But it was a nightmare, him living with us. Why? Your Honor, it was a nightmare living with him. What okay, was he, he was two faced. He would treat him nice and just constantly give me dirty looks. You know, I couldn't even say hi to the guy without him going. It's because you're a weirdo. That's well, <laughs> so what? Yeah, okay. what's, what's weird about him for him to cause you to give him dirty looks? What's so weird about uh, him? He was just weird, like, in the, in, the, in the way that he would approach me about things. Like what? Give me an example of him being weird. Well... Because some could say you're weird. No, I'm not weird. Well, some could believe that. It's probably 
could say well, that. Well, how about but... this? I think you're weird. All right. <laughs> you're entitled you to your opinion. You think he's weird, I think you're weird. All right. And since you can't tell me uh, why you think he's weird, I can't tell I can you tell why you. I think you're weird. An example of him being mm -hmm. weird would be Frank had an issue with the electricity bill. Mm -hmm. I guess it was high. So Frank being the landlord, I rented the room from Frank. Mm -hmm. But Mark would take it upon himself to come to me and say, hey, um, you know, we really want to stay here, so, you know, if you could just, you know, turn off the TV when you leave and turn off the lights when you leave a room. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, you know, I'm an adult. I pay my rent. Mm -hmm. I'm paying for everything I'm using. The light bill. The electric bill. That was included in my rent. Okay. So I'm paying for what I'm using. All right. He's not the landlord. But let so. me tell you something. There's nothing unusual for his mate to say to you, hey, could you turn these lights off and those lights off? They've been on a little too long because we're all in this together and we should try and save money. Sure. You're weird. Now, let's get back to you. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, the first time that he brought Rachel in, this lady here, mm -hmm. uh, this is her four, his fourth or fifth girlfriend since he moved in there. He can't help yeah, but he a also, player. I wasn't expecting... <laughs> what can I say? Judge, yeah. I wasn't expecting when I rented the room to him uh -huh. that I would hear loud sex through the walls. <laughs> his, his, his neighboring roommate was telling me constantly. I can't I said, help I will that. talk to him later on, but anyway. Yeah. Very good. Oh, no, that's enough, sir. I'm going to get to him. It's his lawsuit. Moving expenses, how does he owe you for that? Well, he um, defaulted on the lease that we had um, in March of 2012. Um, I came home from school. When I came home, Mark was downstairs moving furniture. From the looks of it, half of the house was completely gone. Uh, first thing he said to me was talk to Frank. So I went, told Frank, hey, what's up? What's going on? Because as I, when I left that morning, mm -hmm. everything was intact. Right, and what I did had, Frank tell you? He said, uh, well, I have to be out by tomorrow. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm just trying to get all my stuff out. So he out. gave you one day notice? Yes. I figured I paid rent there. I had a lease agreement. So you I didn't feel right. like that returned to what me. What are your expenses you're suing for? Well, my expenses would be the cost that I incurred um, as a result of being well, locked out of the residence. You have a list of some yes. sort? Sir, you tell me about this. He said that you had him move out with one day notice. Yes, because I wasn't expecting to uh, what it happened that day. Mm -hmm. Because I was working through the, uh, with other my, my attorneys to take care of it, to do the loan modification and everything mm -hmm. else, and back finally refused and said, this is it, you have to leave by tomorrow mm -hmm. at this time. Mm -hmm. So I've been so kind and nice, and I told him, don't worry any about anything, Joe, because I will take care of you. We're going to go stay in a hotel. You, I'm going to uh, supply a hotel for, two room days. for you. You can stay there. Did you, tell him, you'd pay, did you tell him you'd pay until you put him back in the same position he was before your mistake? No, no, no. no. Because well, no, no, I told no, no, him I'll no. give you no, all no. the month's rent and you your stay here. here. Huh? Your Honor, please. No, sir, have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. That's enough. Go ahead. Well, I wasn't expecting to leave out like that either or anybody else in the, in the house with us. You knew that you were working with the loan yeah. modification people. As yeah. you say, you had your lawyers on it. You knew there was a risk that yes. you were going to be put uh, out because if it didn't work, yes. that's the result. And it didn't work. Plaintiff Joseph Harris Jr. rented a house with a defendant who claims he often heard Joseph having loud sex. You caused him to be evicted March 15th? Yes. And March 17th, he had to put $500 down for living expenses with his girlfriend. Now, what's this food and clothing you want? What does that have to do with anything? Because when I got locked out of the house, all of my clothes, all of my food, everything I had was inside the house. And you were never able to get back in? It was for three days. I had to work. Okay, so you're right. For those days that you could not dress. Right. I did, right? I had to work. Okay. I did tell you. All right, you. you have your receipt for the things you yes. bought. The two outfits, because you got in on the third day. It's got me. I believe yeah. you wore the same nasty stuff for three days. <laughs> That's what I believe. Never that. Now, emotional distress. 
That speaks for itself, sir. You uh, certainly experienced a lot of emotional distress getting put out the same day. The rent for a new apartment, yes, and the deposit for a new apartment, yes. Sir, basically, you had him illegally evicted. He was your tenant. You did not inform him with the appropriate notice, 30 days. All right? 2500 for the plaintiff. Have a good day. Well, I just want to tell him good luck after I've done for him, for his kids. That's fine. Do Karma, for they'll come back to him. For my kids. That's all. Um, he he should just kick them out kids. back Still when the first in notice in December. Still weirdos in my book, both of y'all. Yeah. All right. Plaintiff Alexis Taylor says she and the defendant bonded over the fact that they both suffer from chronic pain, and they became good friends. Alexis says she allowed the defendant to move in with her when she was on the verge of being homeless. But she's suing her today for rent and damages. Defendant Jennifer Christian says she has suffered from chronic pain since fourth grade, and she thought living with Alexis would be a good idea. However, she claims Alexis treated her more like a servant than a roommate. Young lady suing your former friend for $2,900 for rent and damages? That is correct. All right. Is your mother's place or something? Or? No, it's mine. So You look about 10. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 27. Really? <laughs> Oh, you're going to look 27 at 100. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. Congratulations. All right, well, it may not be great. Isn't there nothing wrong with being old? Looking old? <laughs> starting to look old. Ain't nothing wrong with it, is it? No. Oh, so I am starting no. to look old. Oh, no. <laughs> so why'd no. you answer the question? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. You me. had to acknowledge that I do to say there was nothing wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> you apologize because I look old? Because <laughs> you don't look old. So you <laughs> I don't look old. All right. Yeah, you, you're all right now. <laughs> I had to figure that one out. Plaintiff Alexis Taylor allowed the defendant to move in with her, but the defendant claims Alexis treated her more like a servant than a roommate. How do you know your former friend who you're suing for rent and damages? Yes, so we met in 2016 because we both deal with chronic pain issues, and it's hard to go through, you know, in and of itself, like let what, alone. What, back, or I'm just curious? Oh, no, it's in my legs. I have neuropathy. Oh, okay, neuropathy. Yes, yeah, so it's really hard, you know, to deal with chronic pain by yourself, but to find somebody who's dealing with the same kind of problems and, you know, to be real close, that's something great to have. And so we met, and by 2018, she came to me saying she was on the bridge of being homeless. And I've been homeless before. No, I didn't I tell had, her that. I, but between the ages of 18 to 21, I was by myself, in and out of different friends' houses and homeless shelters. How did that happen to you? Well, I didn't didn't have a really good home life and just bad situations one right it's after the other. It's impressive that you are able to uh, have somebody owe you. Right. <laughs> rent, so right. you did something right. So then in 2018, she came to me, you know, she told me she was on the verge of being homeless. I'm not going to let somebody who I look Your at Honor, as a I was friend, never going to be homeless. Let alone she had asked. As well, let me get her background, then we'll get back to that she, point. We had a conversation because we both share our chronic pain and we both know how hard it is to get our day-to-day -day activities but she didn't have a roommate at at that time and we had met and we both bonded over our pain that we had because not a lot of people understand it nor can they see it mm -hmm. so if you don't see it a lot of people don't believe it so I thought it would be, we thought it would be a great idea that we both, she has an open room and we can both help each other out on our bad days and our good days so that we can still feel good. So some days you feel more pain than others? Yes. Mm. And it this just- This is neuropathy. That's hers. I have um, osteochondromas, so they're uh, bone tumors that grow on my bone, but I've dealt with this since- How old? My first surgery was fourth grade. How old but were it's hereditary. You when yours was discovered? No, I, mine was discovered at the age of 15. Mm -hmm. 
but she's, she's incorrect in how the notion this came about. When she came to me saying, "We're not talking about that no more." <laughs> <laughs> talking about her about her situation. So folks, I like the folks want knowledge out here. They don't want to just go ahead and hear y'all's well, story. I think they want to know. I didn't know what much of what we were saying here today. I'm, so I. I'm well, smarter than I was. Thank so you. you all are making people smart. Let us make people <laughs> smart. <laughs> all right, so they can be like me, go around acting like a know-it-all. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Go ahead>. <laughs> <laughs> but so we had, you know, we became friends. Everything seemed, ex we just meshed really well. We understood each other. So we were like, how could this not work? So it was agreed that I wasn't going to pay if I was going to cook and clean and take up. But once I had gotten there and I noticed that she wasn't like picking up ever and it slowly became as a what? help you through your day to day to, she was treating me like a servant, that I was an employee that I, she didn't want to pick anything up ever, no matter what it was, if she touched it and took it out, I was to pick it up. She was in pain on those occasions. Let me hear your side on this now. So, so tell so, me about the rent and the damages and the agreement to cover for them. So right, so the agreement was when I decided that she could live with me and be my roommate was that until she found employment, she would do the cleaning and the cooking while I'm at work. Mm -hmm. And it came time that, you know, after a while, she wasn't keeping up her end of the bargain. Th that's what they, that's where the issues came up. She Now, what amount of rent was that to be in exchange for? Half of the rent would be $600. So $600 was the amount of upkeep she was to have with the household? I looked at her like she was my sister. I was able she to... She didn't act like it, Your Honor. I was more of her servant than a sister. And I don't agree. <laughs> How many hours do you think you put in at work? All the time. Of work. There was... I... I... Whenever I was home, I was always picking up. I felt like I did all the picking up and cleaning and cooking compared to what she ever did. That was the agreement, I thought. Well, it's to an extent to What's where... The, did you tell me? <laughs> well, we, we had conversated. Like, I, I, I said, listen... Girl, I... don't get too nasty. You can be a little nasty. <laughs> well, yeah. But not a lot. Just yeah. on Friday. <laughs> Fridays go crazy. Go ahead. But I, I told her, I was like, listen, I think, you know, you're taking a little bit of advantage of me or you're maybe getting a rise out of this to see <laughs> me go around up. and just clean Make all it. the time. Little bouncing that stuff. Like, I just bounce in your step. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's dope, I would <laughs> Well, he can live with her, maybe. There you go. <laughs> I got an open room now. <laughs> That's right, and he cleans up pretty well, from what his wife tells me. All right, because he has a double job. He doesn't have room for you guys. <laughs> his wife works in pretty well, <laughs> as do we. All right. Plaintiff Alexis Taylor allowed the defendant to move in with her, but the defendant claims Alexis treated her more like a servant than a roommate. You all would talk about it, and what would she say when she, you brought it to her attention? She seemed like she would take it positively, like she was going to put in some effort to not keep all of her stuff out, or her cook maybe sometimes, and not have me cook all the time. Or if I had a bad day, how come I can't sit down and because elevate my Because you life? have an agreement. Well, that was too much, and it got worse and worse, and she wouldn't even get the stuff in the garbage can. So if I, am I supposed to pick well, up a roll of garbage on. can? Now, ma'am, you, would, you wouldn't even throw the stuff away. You'd put stuff near the garbage can and wouldn't even put it in. She was getting of a rise. Of not. A rise out of me, Your Honor. She's really taking the things that she's saying happened personally. None we, of that Did happened. she ever mention these things to you? No, we not at all. And then when she started having issues or whatever she was thinking about, she just started just not being there. I, there, you could, there's only so okay, much somebody so, can So take. let's add up the rent. What month? Because you're suing for 1200 in rent and 1700 in damages. What? Let's start with the rent. Yes. What so month? I, so for the months of February and March of 2019. And did you have to evict her or did she... You all come to an agreement. You had a month to month. What were the circumstances? She just left by her own means. I have texts on pages two and three of me making sure that she was okay and if she was going to be back and her responses and when I asked for money for the damages. You she was being her, very mean. Hey, that day. if you're not planning on staying for the month, just let me know because I haven't seen you in a few days. I'm just worried about you. That's her to you, ma'am. And you say, 
that and you. <laughs> I don't care what you're talking about. I'm in the house now. By the time you get home, I'm gone laughing at her. She what knew I was about? leaving, though, Your Honor. We, we had I gotten had into no a big idea. fight. And I told her I just didn't, I couldn't. You the dumb one. Maybe think twice before you get another roommate. I'm not going to give you a cent. Take me to small claims. You'll pay for it in lawyers. Have fun. It was a dirty house, Your Honor. And what's the damages for? When I'm, I walked in one of my days coming off of work with the sink messed up, the hammer to the cabinets. She poured I sticky juice all over. After she, po she left? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, she, poured she poured sticky juice all over my floors. It went no, under the floors and that's, it I molded. just didn't pick up for like a couple of she days. She got mad. Well, and she decided to retaliate. No retaliation. I just got lazy, and that's why and I was in and out. Do you have that? Um, in pages four and five, I have the damages as well as the amount that I had to okay, pay. Okay, but show damages. me something where you ask her to reimburse under the uh, assumption that you believe she did the damage. So on... And she did it intentionally, so certainly you should have said something to her. Right. On page two, where it says March 5th, 2019, I sent her a, t a text regarding needing the rent as well as all of the things that she had messed up. Yep. Look, I need the rent. I already have to fix everything you messed up. The floors are terrible. The ceiling tiles are out. The sink is unusable. We have an agreement. I don't understand why you would do this to me. You say, you're the dumb one, maybe think twice. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, it, I, we had had a full-blown conversation, and I, all this had to do, it was a simple, all, that she was sorry and that she wasn't trying to get the what rise out of me. What is she sorry about? What did she do to you? Maybe I'm missing something. What did she do She full-blown took advantage of me. I was supposed to be her servant. It went from just minimal cleaning and cooking to clean, cleaning her room, cleaning up after her in the bathroom. Well, what I do know, ma'am, what I read is that... Not not only did you damage the property and laugh in her face, you also laughed in her face to, about staying there for free. You called her dumb. You said, next time you'll think twice. I ain't giving you a dime. Take me to court. And she did. She took you to court and she won. $2,900. <laughs> well, all I wanted was a sorry and that we could be friends again. Well, hopefully we can get through this and get past this. Because like I said, I've always looked to you as family and I didn't want it to get this far. I thought you know we I love were you. family and I thought that you respected me and I thought that this was going to be a friendship forever and you totally took advantage of me the wrong way. Plaintiff Glenn Morgan says years ago, he went to jail for drug possession. And after he got out, he moved to New Jersey and in with the defendant. However, Glenn is suing his former roommate for an unpaid electric bill. Defendant Sean Teal says he and Glenn live close to the Jersey Shore, and they often ran into the cast of the popular reality show while partying at the shore. Sean says he's proud of Glenn for turning his life around, but he needs to put his children before their friendship, and he's countersuing for rent. Start with you. First, I want to say I love your show, and Thank I you. admire how you've changed your life around. I'm kind of in that same situation right now. Um, Tell me how. I moved out to Arizona in 06, got in some trouble in 07 for simple possession, wrong place, wrong time. Um, I got out in September of 09, moved right back to New Jersey. Um, I needed a place to stay in March, Sean Teal right here, he let me stay with him for a little while. And then come, uh, say August of 2010, he had a problem, his electric got shut off. He asked if I can help him get the electric turned on in my name. He said he would make all the payments, and he made, I think, three payments, and now I, he was $3,800. When did you move out? I moved out, I would say, uh, October of 2010. And? Your Honor, that's not exactly the truth. How long was the electric on in uh, your name? When did it got shut they off. shut it off? Um, February, I think it got shut off. February of 2012. And the bill was $3,823? Can you have that? Cents. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir, Your Honor. Um, Glenn and I have been friends for over 15 years. Um, he, in that time, I've seen him make a great deal of change in himself, and I'm very proud of the change he's made in himself. I support him like I support all my friends in any way I possibly can. Uh, but unfortunately, Your Honor, I'm a father as well, and I have to put my kids ahead of my roommates. Um, the reason we're here in court today is because I want to maintain that friendship. Um, 
rather than duke it out on the streets, uh, I'd like to, you know, walk out of here, shake Glenn's hand, and still be friends after all of this. Good to hear that, and I'm glad you responded in the right way. And people say, why do we hear disputes and small claims? It's less than $500 and all that. It's because we don't want them to resort to violence, no matter how much it is. So tell me uh, about living together. Okay, um, well, he's a free spirit. I mean, he, he comes and goes, and that's one of the qualities I really admire about him, um, that he doesn't really feel tethered to a lot. Um, but since he's had a child himself, I've seen him gain a lot of responsibility and really try and get his life back together. Now, it might not be wise if your lawsuit says you're countersuing him for rent. Yes, sir. Yet you know he comes and goes and you're all right with it. Well, no, I mean... You may his... be hurting your rent case. <laughs> right. No, no, no. I... <laughs> so... I understand that. You, might, you understand shouldn't that. be all right, particularly if you're suing him for rent because his response is going to be, Judge, he said it was all right. <laughs> you heard him just that... now. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. All right. So, um, so while Glenn stayed with me, it was a lot of fun. Um, we lived close to the Jersey Shore. We spent more than one night down the shore, you know, doing the shore thing, going to clubs. Did you run into... Uh, Snooky. Snooky. Yeah, Snooky we actually have run into the... Vinny, the, did yeah, you? Yeah, we have. Right. We have run into them down there. Um, Were they doing their thing on the beach or hot tubs? Uh, or? They Falling do their the thing Falling all over making New Sloppy Jersey drunk? look horrible. Really? <laughs> You all observed that. That's the yes. I don't want to get mad yeah. with me. You all are telling me that you all saw that crew sloppy drunk. Absolutely. Which yes. ones in particular? <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. Plaintiff Glenn Morgan says after he was released from jail on a drug charge, he rented a house with a defendant at the Jersey Shore, but he's suing him today for an electric bill. Go ahead, sir. Um, so in March of 2010, uh, Glenn, as he said, had moved back from Arizona. Uh, his living situation was unstable or in some way he had no place to stay, <laughs> right. Uh, so I told him he could stay with me for a couple of days. Well, when a couple of days got past like two or three days, I said, we have to figure out something here. Um, you know, I'm a single dad with three kids. I have to worry about everything being taken care of for them. You know, I can't foot the bill for someone else. So. Um, we agreed he'd pay $100 a week for rent. Beginning in, in March. March. Moved in and made an agreement That's for not the agreement's not $100 true. a week. What was the agreement? There never was an agreement if, that if I had something, I can throw him a couple bucks here and there, okay. which I did do that. I gave him money here and there. In the meantime, you would live there how long under that circumstance? Um, I was only there for a little while. I know. What was, when there's an agreement to compensate somebody for living there, they usually tell him, well, I'm going to be here so-and-so time. He said just to help him out with what I can until I get on my feet. Okay. He was trying to help and me out. And you didn't know when you were going to leave. Yeah. All right. And how many weeks did he live there without paying? 32. All right. What did you say to him during this time? 32 well, weeks went by. You received not one dime. What were you saying well, to in, him? Well, in August, well, I continued to approach him, but he was unemployed at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was understanding. I was allowing it to go under the understanding that when he did gain employment, it would be made up. All right. Um, and in August. When did he gain employment? Uh, around August, he started working. What was his response when you began asking for your money once he was working? Well, around that time, Your Honor, uh, as he stated, the electric was shut off. My solution to our mutual problem was to have the uh, electric turned on in his name. In lieu of making rent, he could pay the electric bill until it reached a level point where the amount that I saw that he owed me in Whose rent... Whose name was it already in? It was in my name originally, Your Honor. So... To address it, you put your light bill in someone else's name. Well, like I said, Your Honor, he had started working, so the income was coming in. I had a problem. He had a problem. It seemed like a mutual agreement would yeah, solve both You didn't have to put problems. it in his name. His electric got shut off for not paying a bill. Sounds more likely. Go ahead. But you say you just wanted to put it in his name because you thought that was the best way to address the debt he owed you. All right. You, by chance, put your house in his name so he can pay that. 
It's the same no. logic. No. He owes me money, Your Honor. So I decided to put my house in his name and let him pay the mortgage. <laughs> Sir, what do you say to that? Um, we never had an agreement on any rent. Mm -hmm. Unless if I came across the money, I'd help him out. $40 here, $40 there. Okay. Why did you expect to live there free even after you got a job? It's, I didn't. I oh, you expected to pay him once you got a job? To help him out, I didn't. No, never once a, you got a job. Yeah, we never, help him out is when you yeah, didn't have a job. Yeah, we never once had a set you amount got a job, whatever, whether you had a set amount or not, did <laughs> you expect to pay him once you got a job, or did you expect that the freeloading you did earlier, you owed him no we, money for? We made an agreement when I did get a job that we would come to some terms and agreements, but we never reached that. You made an agreement that you would make an agreement. Yes. <laughs> got you. All right, 3823 is your judgment for the electric bill. 3200 is your judgment for the rent. You guys have a good day. Thank you. Um... I don't know if this went the right way, but hopefully it's all going to work out. I'm still your friend, Mr. Teal. Here's to Mr. Morgan. Plaintiff Samantha Sanchez was best friends with the defendant, and the defendant's family was always there for her. Samantha claims she was almost shot while the defendant was fighting with a girl. And Samantha's suing her today for unpaid rent. Defendant Monica Black admits she and Samantha were best friends. Despite the fact that Samantha slept with a guy who Monica was interested in while Samantha was married, Monica denies owing Samantha for anything. Start with you. Um. Me and Monica have been friends since high school. We instantly clicked, became sisters afterwards. Um, I went through a lot with my family, um, just certain incidents and stuff. Uh, Monica and her family helped me out a lot with that situation. They came, they let me stay at their house, they fed me, all kinds of stuff. We went to concerts together, everything together all the time, you know what I mean? And then we were at a concert one time, um, she was fighting with this girl about her ex-boyfriend cheating on her. And then um, the cops were yelling, disperse or we will shoot. The cops threatened to shoot you because what? Because she was trying to fight this girl. Okay. She swung at her or something? Yeah. And she spit she on her She attacked her. Yeah. Well, she spit on her. Okay. And then the girl did nothing. And then they just started fighting after that. I was trying to convince her to walk away, just walk away. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't walking away. Okay. Um, Honestly, she's a spoiled brat. Anything that comes her way, if she doesn't like it, she throws a fit about it. Um, we had been planning to move with each other for over a year. And then she's supposed to save money from her taxes. She's supposed to do all kinds of stuff. She's supposed to help me find a place. She didn't help me find a place. She sent me three places off of Craigslist. That's all she did the whole entire time. Um, but you all became roommates. Yeah, because she's my best. I, this girl was my everything. She, we did everything together. When we got our own places. Why well, couldn't you get alone then? I tried. I tried really hard. Okay, but you couldn't. So why did you move in with her? Because we had already signed a lease. Okay, so you got along until no, you signed the lease. No, not every day our relationship wasn't perfect, but I mean, she was still, at the end of the day, I could still yeah. call on her, and she could still call on At the end of the me. day, but my question is, prior to moving in with her, hadn't you noticed that she was problematic, that there were problems? You just told me she's a yeah. spoiled brat. She was fighting, she spits in people's faces. She was horrible. But I moved in with her. Yeah, because I loved her, and honestly, I didn't realize the things before this. Question is, prior to moving in with her, hadn't you noticed that she was problematic, that there were problems? You just told me she's a spoiled yeah. brat. She was fighting, she spits in people's faces. She was horrible. Plaintiff Samantha Sanchez is suing her former friend, who claims Samantha had sex with a man whom she was interested in while Samantha was married. You give me some background, ma'am, then we'll get to the rent you she's suing you for. All right, so, well, like she said, you know, best friends, high school, click just like that. Um, had our problems, like uh, sleeping with some guy that I've liked since I was 14 years old while married. You know, and then... Uh, Those before you all moved in with each other. Oh, yeah. And then uh, problems while I was pregnant, she didn't... She kind of wasn't there for me because I couldn't go drinking and partying. Because I couldn't be there whenever Monica and wanted, then, right? Uh, what else? 
I'll ask you the same question. If she was doing all these things that you disapproved of and had all these character flaws and you all got into all these arguments, particularly over a man, why would you decide that it was a good move for you all to become roommates? Just, just, I just brushed it off my shoulders, you know. I, okay. I, she's somebody I, I didn't want to lose, somebody that I thought was always going to be there for me. Okay, and what so, changed the fact that you didn't want to lose her? When after a couple days after we signed the lease, just we had this this blowout, this... It was worse than any other incident? It, worse than anything, yeah. Okay, let me hear from you believe. about what happened, ma'am. Um, she texted me the day that I moved in saying that she wasn't going to move in with me because somebody had told her that I was talking crap about her, saying that she was a slob smoking cigarettes in her car. That's why she a didn't want to move in. A slob for smoking cigarettes in her car, exactly. so therefore that she's not going to move and in did my with you. Did my best friend even ask me if I ever said any of that? No, How she didn't. How do you, she just young how old are you? I'm 22. How old and I'm are you? 21. All right. I'm not moving in with you because you told somebody I'm a slob when I smoke cigarettes. <laughs> and I have the text of all of it too, right here. Uh huh. And she, what was your response? I said, because she says, I'm sorry, but I can't live with you. And I said, why? And she said, because the things I heard today. Well, what did you hear? And then. 20 minutes later, she finally tells me that. Are, are, are you serious right now? Doesn't that sound made up? Like, can you mm -hmm. at least have enough respect to me to ask me if I actually said that? Mm -hmm. No, she just assumed that I said it. You have the text. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Where it says, I'm not moving in with you because you told somebody I smoke cigarettes and I'm a slob with cigarettes. That, it's not, that's not exactly how it You tell went. me No, that how is it exactly went. how it, it went because I have it right You tell me. That big old fight, that blowout that we had at the house that I said we said both signed the lease for, um, you know, we had that big old fight, and uh, then the and next day and we made day, up after that. Be fight. quiet, ma'am. And then the next day, we call or I I hear I haven't told anybody about the fight. Nobody knew, and then she's this girl comes into my work telling me everything. Uh, and I had no choice but to believe her because nobody, I hadn't told her. All anybody right, else. enough with the kitty gossip. Now, she never moved in, yeah, but she told you she wasn't going to move house. in. And at that point, how did you all determine who would owe what? We didn't determine anything. All right, and so just... you're suing her for 5000 for what time frame? For the, our le year lease that we, ha we signed. Okay. It's 13 months. And how much was the rent per month? Uh, 9.95. All right. Did you try and get a replacement roommate? I'm not gonna get a replacement roommate. I Good tried enough. to get a replacement right. roommate. I had somebody set up and everything. She no, had she, set she up. didn't have anybody she set up. No, right. she and I told well, her. you've expressed your desire, and your desire is not to have one. And the law is that you get no money unless you try to get a replacement roommate. And you've already said you have no intention of getting a replacement roommate, so you have every intention of paying all the rent yourself. When she told you she wasn't living there, your intention was, I'm never going to get a roommate. Just like you just told me, I'm because never going to get a roommate. Claim her. dismissed. You're never going to get a roommate. Have a good day. Plaintiff Stephanie Sanchez met the defendant through her boyfriend, and they got along. However, Stephanie claims after they rented an apartment together, they fought constantly, and the defendant even called Stephanie a racial slur. She's suing her former roommate for a key, food, and court costs. Defendant Jessica Bayido says after she moved in with Stephanie, she discovered Stephanie was extremely manipulative and dominating. Jessica claims, when she finally stood up for herself, Stephanie started bad-mouthing her to her friends. And then she got physical. Jessica denies owing Stephanie for anything. Tell me what happened. We met through our boyfriends, and at first we got along. And we decided to move in together and get an apartment together. Shortly after, we found out that, that we did not get along. And there's constant, like, arguments and fights. And there was even a point where it got so ugly that she actually threw a racial slur at me, which I found really offensive because she called me a stupid Mexican and no, her mom was actually Mexican, so I found no point in what she told me. We just did not get along and she stopped living there after um, maybe around June and she would not sleep there. And she knew my time of work hours and there was even a time where she actually came in and got all my food out of the refrigerator. How long did you all live together at that point? The, uh, that was approximately like nine months. You all had lived together nine months. Uh-huh. And then she moved? 
She was not staying at the apartment at if night? If she lived together nine months, you uh -huh. all were living together. She did stay there. Yes. <clears throat> so she moved? She was not staying there at night. She would only be staying there. She would go when I used to be at work and start messing with stuff around the apartment. She was on the lease? Yeah. All right. She moved when the lease was up? Yeah. All right. And why don't you give me some background? Okay. First of all, um, she's right. We met through our boyfriends, and we shortly found out that we did not get along. The reason for that was was because she was very manipulative, bossy. She practically acted like she was my mother at one point, told me how to handle my relationship with my boyfriend. I took it for a while until I got fed up with it. You I mean you took it? As in, I was very nice said? about it. I would just hear her out and I, I was very cooperative with her. She had a very dominating um, personality. Why did you cooperate? And, I'm sorry? Why did you cooperate? Because I, Let for the sake tell of you the peace, mm -hmm. in, in that apartment, I didn't want any drama at first. And eventually I got fed up with it and I started standing up for myself and I started being defensive towards her. Mm -hmm. So um, I started doing as I wanted, not as she wanted. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, she did not like it, so she retaliated against me. Oh. She would, she first off, she would talk very badly behind my back all the time to my boyfriend, to her boyfriend. Her boyfriend would communicate with my boyfriend because they worked together. For what would they say to her when well, she is talking about you? Uh, I'm not sure what her boyfriend said. I know Yours. for a fact that my boyfriend, though, uh -huh. however, he would usually try to stay out of it for the sake of not causing more oh, than so what's already happening. So when she would talk to him, mm -hmm. your boyfriend, and then, negatively about you, you think he just listened or? He, he did, and he didn't. He was also his, her friend, so he tried to stay out of it. But however, I would get mad because, I mean, at that point I had done a lot for him and there was, um, like I said, there was a lot of instigating uh, through her that just caused even I'll more I'll just tell your boyfriend in the future, stick up for me, boyfriend, when somebody's talking behind my back <laughs> like that, particularly when they're talking to you. Exactly. I know you're her friend, but we don't do the same things, do well, you? Well, we were never friends. I never considered no, no, her a friend. No, you she said was an acquaintance. Her and your boyfriend mm -hmm. were friends. Correct, yes. Right, so you need to explain. I know she's your friend, but we have a different type of friendship. Exactly. Here. That's right. exactly, like I said, at first, I was very peaceful about it. I okay. tried a let it run by me until I just started getting fed up with it and I started defending myself, started retaliating against him, against her, and I just basically started doing what I wanted to do, not what she okay. wanted, because she Good. is not my mother. She can't tell me what to do. Good. So when that happened, more and more disagreements would happen. I mean, okay. we got to a point where we had such a ridiculous disagreement that she got physical with me. She pushed me. She put her hands on me. She got on top of me. If it wasn't because of her boyfriend stopped her, I was just holding back because I knew once I you know, I would lay hands on her, I probably wouldn't be able to stop. Like I said, there was a lot of instigating uh, through her that just caused even I'll more I'll just tell your boyfriend in the future, stick up for me, boyfriend, when somebody's talking behind my back like that, <laughs> particularly when they're talking to you. Exactly. I know you're her friend, but we don't do the same things, do well, you? Plaintiff Stephanie Sanchez is suing her former roommate, and she claims during a fight, the defendant called her a racial slur. How does she owe you for a key and food? Well, um, when we first got the lease, they gave us two keys. Mm -hmm. And um, because our boyfriends were living with us, I went ahead and made my boyfriend a key. And her boyfriend was, her and her boyfriend going back and forth, trading off that one single key. Mm -hmm. And when she wouldn't be home, when he wouldn't be home, she'd go to the, to the, um, to the management company and get a master key. Mm -hmm. And that master key, she ended up losing because towards the end of the lease, she did not turn it in. And over and over, I would constantly tell mm -hmm. her that she needed to turn it in. And living with her was basically like living with a child. Some of the issues she's bringing up is because most of the time it was everything about cleaning. You know, once there's mold in the dishes, mm -hmm. it's time to get rid of it. The bills, I was constantly telling her you what was the You have to wait until mold before you there was, wash dishes? No, like I was telling her to throw it out because oh. she never washed okay, anything. But if you sit there and watch it molding. Yeah, w before it would get to that point. At you points, don't just say, well, it's her turn. <laughs> Let it mold. No, actually, Let we roaches, would. Uh, Come no. into the house, rats, mice. No, actually. Because it's her turn. <laughs> actually, no, we would throw out those dishes, even the refrigerator. We were constantly on that, okay. but there was times where it's just like, are you kidding me? Like, up to what point is she going to do this? So that was basic, those were the basic issues that we were constantly okay. having about when the bills were due and also 
cleaning up after yourself, which I think it's common knowledge about when you're living with someone to have that kind of respect. Okay, and the key once again and the food. She never returned the key. And, and were you charged for the key? It was, came out of the security deposit. Okay. And that, I think, should have came out from her pocket Correct. personally, not the security deposit. And then also with the food situation, mm -hmm. It's not really the food that bothers me, it's more or less the retaliation that she had to get everything out. I'm suing her for the cost of it, and it's not really cost the cost of the food? Yes. Okay, some food you purchased, she did what? She took it out of the refrigerator because she said the refrigerator was hurt. To my knowledge, you're only allowed to have one refrigerator in the okay, apartment. Okay, she took your food out of the refrigerator. Out of the refrigerator. And did what with it? She threw it all over the apartment. Okay, and when you mentioned it to her, what did she say? There was no talking to her at that point okay. because we were not getting along. And Our, you all were still living there? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, and I also have a note that she left me that had profanity on it. I, okay, you can't sue her for profanity. No, I know that, but um, I'm just saying, like, have the at this point, on like, the how can you talk to someone that leaves those kind of notes? Gotcha. The someone, information on the key. A, yeah. Yeah. Let me hear from you. Uh, actually, this specifically, there's a reason. Uh, I'm sure she's not going to mention that, but she actually, we were both not supposed to be living there because you manipulated your parents to come to my parents' Ma house. Ma'am, you did live there, so now what? Exactly. What do you want to well, say no. about the key and specific, the food? The food. I'm talking about right now the food. First off, that food, that was my fridge that I purchased. Food, First we're off, talking about the food. The, food, the reason why well, I'm we giving you the reason. We didn't say refrigerator, food. Okay, the food was in my refrigerator and Who the reason... Own the food? I took it out, but I'm giving you the All right, reason you're why. Not you're being evasive with your answer. One last time, who purchased the food? She did. All right, then uh, you if you destroyed the food that she purchased, why don't you think you should pay for it? I didn't destroy it. I took it out. And scattered it across the floor? Yes. Why did you and scatter it across the floor? I'm, okay, we had an agreement. Her parents... No, why did you scatter it? That's a she very... She wasn't supposed to be living there, both okay, of us. Okay, so that was retaliation, mm -hmm. and I think you did that uh, maliciously, so I'm going to charge you for it. Mm -hmm. What about the key? The key... Uh-huh. The key, actually, she never tried to contact me about mm -hmm. that. All right. Landlord contacted her and charged her, and so therefore you must pay your share. Have a good day. $230. Judgment for the plaintiff. Have a good day. Because she has an issue with me that she doesn't let go in the past. It's in the past. She still continues to harass me over Facebook. And then I have to block her and Were her boyfriend. Were you supposed to be living there? That's why you had your parents come to my house, because right? Because you could and not you tell her. Because so, so you weren't supposed we to be staying there, right? We could not get along. So you weren't supposed to be staying there either, we though, right? Us. We're trying. We why? Why? Why it. wasn't we I being? But we you were. You were staying there with you your guys boyfriend. Would not agree. See, that's like, honestly, you're the biggest hypocrite. That's why you were growing weed in your with Nick, right? Yep. Really.